The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman on this Thursday, the 27th of July. I just want to show this chart immediately. Here is the one minute e mini chart, and we're looking at the sideways move that went to a peak F of the doji candle, then, a, then an H pattern, a lowercase h, then a larger H pattern, and now it's testing the lows. And if it starts to take out the left side low of 8.02 this morning, that's 10, two minutes past 8 Eastern time of 44.24.50, now you've got to look at, it, look at it and say, okay, you've got resistance at the 46.28 to 46.30 area, and uh, it's kind of open to the downside, at least in the very short term. But most importantly, that's the near term of the one-minute chart. The 10-minute chart, look at this. From that Fed meeting uh, announcement yesterday, look what happened. The 10-minute E-mini went uh, a spiked up, did the Eiffel Tower once, started to do the Eiffel Tower again, and then held beautifully. The nine-period moving average flipped positive at 350 uh, at 10 to 4. Now, nah, come on, 10 to 4. What am I looking at? Yeah, 10 to 4. And since 10, at, since 45.92, up until all the way through to where we are right now, having gone to 40, uh, 46.34.50, we're now at 46.24.50, that green nine period moving average is still positive. Now, why do I mention this? Because I'm anticipating, even though I was wrong, I was early in terms of the uh, the dominant, all the, the indices right now. Uh, let me see if I've still, no, I haven't got that chart. I'll do it in, in the show a little later on because I've got a number of questions. I think we're making a very short-term top right here, uh, just in terms of intraday, and we'll see if that carries through in a 10, 20, the, the second part of the session kind of starts. Um, and we'll see if if we slide, if the Dow goes negative and starts to hold the minus 40 at any point today, I think we've made some kind of a top that says now there should be th th uh, threshes to the upside that fail and slowly we'll start to make lower, lower highs. And I'll explain why I'm saying that. Look at the price above. It missed by one point. I'll give you the exact number. 3563.61 was the high yesterday. 3563.2.19. So less than two points off this recovery high. Uh, there's a chance that you make a, a Chapman Wave two bar reversal. But wait a minute. One of the things that I ignored to my to my detriment it was something I uh, I went against my own techniques uh, purely because we made that peak D there and I thought all right that's usually where we started we got a big sell off at 34,586 on the 16th of June we should start to see a sell off here but I kept saying every single day I even had a, part, a good part of a show and I discussed this with Tom O'Brien saying the price is way above the nine period moving average the nine is way above the 40 to see the green go pink you'd have to see the the down probably below 34,500, 34,300. So as it stands right now, it's going to be a process or very bad news. Well, the market has climbed a wall of worry. Suddenly, all that worry has lessened. So is that now the counterpoint where we don't have a wall of worry to climb? No, I don't want to look at it like that. It is there, sitting there. Most importantly, what I want to say is there's a rotation going on. I'll talk about the rotation as we get there. But in the meantime, to see the start of a pullback in the Dow, you'd have to see at least one or two closes below the 35,213 nine-period exponential moving average. That's number one. Number two is if you're looking at the S&P. There we go, S&P. Very much above the nine-period moving average. Nine is above the 14. The MACD is good, but it's starting to narrow. The stochastic's good at 90%. The on-balance volume's a little overbought. 
Uh, so here again, it has to be a process of very bad news. Just just filters the market and it stays there, as I said yesterday and the day before. It's got to be there and be persistent every single day for about a week and a half to really see this market start to drop precipitously. Okay, that's number one. Number two is within the context of, I'm not even talking about the weekly charts, all of the weekly charts are really strong. So that's why we've kept corp long positions uh, in the Dow, one from uh, 2020, another one from 2023. And we're just keeping these as corn. We trade around them. Meantime, back at the ranch, what are we looking at? The QQQ, which wasn't acting as well as the others because it made a high at 387.13 on the 19th, 19th of this month. And even with today's rally, it hasn't gone above that. 384.71 is the high. And if you look at the uh, nine period moving average, it's slowly making an M shaped pattern. But that black 14 period moving average is still rallying and the nine is still rallying. So you have to wait until they start to decline. They haven't done that yet. Mac, these weeks, the Cassock's very weak is 59% on balance volumes weak. But the 914 is the uh, is the technical indicator of last resort, right? Like the, like the Fed is the bank of last resort. So the 914 for me is. So the weekly chart, fabulous, uh, monthly chart, fabulous. Let's go to the SMHs. The SMHs are same as the, as the Dow, but they have got a, an island reversal to the top. I suspect this will be filled in over the next three weeks. But in the meantime, 160.79 was the high. Uh, I, th I think it was on the 19th. And today's high is 160.06. Only less than a point away, but we're going to have to watch this closely. Month, weekly and monthly charts are still very good. Let's go to um, uh, now gold. Uh, my price is all wrong. Mine says up 14, but it's at 1984. Uh, obviously, yesterday's close was at uh, 2009. This is down very sharply, and the GDX is also down sharply. The GDX is at 30.73. And as, as I see it, right on the 200-period moving average. And that says to me, we're in a phase right now where you cannot, as we're talking, the dollar just went to a new recovery high. Leg C, that's what I was saying. 101.82 to 102.30. If it starts to break that resistance area, that means the dollar can keep moving higher. And that's the reason why I'm saying, even though I was wrong on a an attempt to get some kind of reversal in the market in the Dow, I think we're really close to starting the process and it's going to be a process. So that tells me that the dollar, and I spoke about this on the weekly basis, we are all along the dollar away from 2018. That's not the price, that was the date. Um, and uh, taken a little bit off, but we still got, got a core position. And here it is up uh, 66, 66 ticks and you're looking at the Euro, Right now, the euro is trading at, oh, it tried to rally, then it failed. It's now at 1.103, down 0 0.008. And that was a peak D top that we were looking at in the daily. And I believe we're going to see a weekly peak D top. That means the USD JPY, the uh, yen should be rallying. And it is rallying, but it's not acting anywhere close as well as the, it did act better than the dollar, but it act good. Now it has to play catch up. I think the silver did I know? I think the silver is down strong. I'll be back. Now is a seven. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Yeah, so here's a question. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bezo, if you have time, could you look at Microsoft, please? Will it even out here or is it headed high or low? Thanks. I have an option that expires next Friday. Uh, the 340 call. Now, I always get mixed up for the, for the decades and decades that I've been an, uh, an American citizen. Um, when people say next, when I say next, I mean, I'm, I'm skipping this Friday and I'm going to the next one. But many people say next, meaning this very next uh, Friday. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, I'm thinking that it's this Friday. Let me just check. This is August. Oh, yeah, the 18th. Okay, so it'll be this coming Friday. Um, so let me do this right now. Uh, Microsoft, yeah, you, you're talking about, I'm talking about the daily chart because you're talking about within uh, a day. So I would do this. Uh, it was looking okay three days ago. Then, of course, came out. The, the, it's been going lower and lower and lower, and then it had a very ugly day yesterday, and it's trying to catch up, but it didn't work out too well. It's down dollar twenty right now, 336.82. One of the reasons why I looked at Microsoft the other day and I said, I'm calling this an F slash B in the daily chart, but everything about it, uh, except for the nine period exponential moving average, which hasn't yet crossed negative, the MACDs turned down, the stochastics turned down, the unbalanced volume is turning down. I, it's just a matter of time before the price catches up and the nine period eventually slips up to the downside. It might take a week or two. I think it's very close to doing that. So I'm going to suggest that if you have some premium left in the uh, in the 340 call and it's trading at 336, so it's down four, so you've lost your premium plus you're losing the four points. I I always say I haven't done this for quite a while, but I think in the options market, the the moment something goes against you, the best uh, move you can make is to fire first and ask questions later. This has just been my experience and I've learned that and it's helped me, certainly my subscribers. We, we don't, I don't ever move stops around. I don't put a stop in and say, okay, I'm gonna give it, just a once in a while I'll say, instead of adding another stop if we get, get out, I'd rather expand this and you know what, almost every single time, if I'm wrong in saying that it's going to go a certain way, I, 
It means I'm wrong. So I don't want to add to the wrongness. That's just silly. So I always say, keep the stop or tighten it up or get out. Let's do it that way. So I'm going to say to you, I could be wrong. You, you have to take this just for what it's worth. I'm saying to you, there could be a Friday turnaround in Microsoft, but to get to 340 from 336 right now, that is a really big ask. If it couldn't do it today with that gap up to the upside where the short squeeze was on and you had certain uh, stocks that really came back like the AI stocks that had been just decimated, some of them, over the last couple of days and had really one got very good earnings, Enovix, which we actually own, but uh, we just missed today adding by a few cents. We wanted to add to our position, just missed it, um, and others. But this is in a different category. This is AI, but it's now AI that has uh, it has a little bit of overhang with other areas. So I'm just going to say to you, I would exit, and then you can, you've still got money. I would rather you exit with money than without money. You can always do it again a little later on. But at this particular point, you see the way it, it, it did exactly the same thing at, at uh, 351.47. Uh, earlier in June, that was around about the June, the uh, it was the 16th of June, but then it held the pe the the green nine period moving average held on every single decline, even there was lower lows, and now you can see the black. For I, actually, I've done a lot of work on this. I've had a couple of uh, breaks, just breaks away from the office. They were working. I wouldn't even call them working vacations. They were just. I was I, for other reasons. I was out the office. Um, spent a lot of time on this. And it's it's always a learning process. I mean, I've been in, I, mean, I couldn't even tell you how many thousands of you know trades over the years and years and years. But that's not the issue. The issue is um, you're always learning because the market is just giving you information that sometimes you overlook. And the one I don't want to overlook now is look on every one of those down moves. The green nine period moving average was down, but look at the black fourteen period moving. It was just one very brief moment where the Microsoft went red. Uh, on the 26th of June, and then it went right back to uh, red in the price, but not the green nine period moving average. The next day, it just continued higher. And even with the two gap downs, which really looked like a dreaded age failure pattern uh, on, early in July, it just went right back. So I think it's used up all of those momentary sparks of, of buying pressure. I think that's all, most of it's used up. It could have another one. But I don't think it's going to be Friday. It could be maybe next week, where it just attempts to get to the high that was made on the 25th a couple of days ago of 351. Wow, you would love that if it's tomorrow. I actually don't think so. It's going to be lower lows, lower highs, and possibly lower lows, just for the shorter term. And that's what I'm talking about here in the market. I think we're looking at some of these really big high flyers. Am I going to go to Amazon right now? Amazon. Yeah, big move up today. Will it take out the high that was made uh, a couple of weeks ago? Look, it went pink yesterday for the nine period moving average, and today's back to green. When it does that for a day and then goes back to green, that's a much better pattern than having a follow through with another pink candle, a red candle the next day. But it's got a peak C in the weekly chart, whereas, uh, what am I looking at you? Um, yeah, that's right. Whereas Microsoft, in the weekly chart, has already made uh, this inverted, this doji candle. It's like a little mini hammer. Uh, evening star could be any any one of those candles. Depends on how you interpret it. I always say candle means nothing until the very next candle. And here it is on a weekly basis following through to the downside. So I'm just saying it's a fantastic company. I think it's going to make all-time highs again in 2023. I just think it needs a little digestive phase. Hope that helps you. So what I'm saying is I would definitely, um, if, if you've got more than one position, i take something off right now. And then if you want to just play a lottery, that's one thing. But if you're looking at the price movement as it's, oh, 120-minute chart. No, wait, let's just go to the 10-minute chart right here. And remember, at 1020, I said, I think we start to see selling pressure in the in the general market. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. 46.18. Um, and it's got that peak. Either. Well, now the 10-minute chart in the, in the, there it is, 10-minute chart in the E-mini has gone negative. And what are we looking at here? We're looking at Microsoft. Oh, I hit the wrong thing. Oh, I hope I haven't messed that up. Microsoft. 
There it is. So Microsoft dreaded H to a larger H. If if Microsoft takes out 330, 314, if it closes under 332 for more than 25 minutes, I think the upside is extremely limited at this point. Hope that helps you. I, I'm sorry, it's 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 not. I'm sure it's not the news you wanted to hear, but that's the way I'm looking at it right now. Let's go to the. Um, Next question was, and I, I didn't, I didn't see this. Actually, I'm going to ask someone, anyone, could you just uh, email me at basilchapman at Um uh, I want to see if I'm getting my information here on both computers that I'm looking at right now. Some of it's coming through, but I got a feeling that the late the people who uh, email me off the temperature get there. I just don't get to see it in quick enough time. I'm, Attention traders, Larry Pesavento, the renowned trading mastermind, is holding an exclusive live trading event on Wednesday, August 2nd. From 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, transform your trading skills with the real-time wisdom of a Wall Street veteran. Just $295 gets you a front row seat to this power-packed session, plus a month free of Larry's sought-after newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7 a $97 value. Elevate your strategies, decode the markets, and achieve your financial goals. Remember, this event will be archived for all attendees, and Larry only does a few of these a year. Don't miss this opportunity. Sign up today at TFNN.com. Secure your future and start trading smarter. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I got emails. So just look at this one guys from Microsoft is now down a little bit more. That's a small much to get it. So there are a couple of things going on here. Um, I missed X, XPV, I believe it is. This is an EV company in China. Xping um, Inc. I don't think they say the X. Xping. Xping. Xping, or whatever it is. Inc. Designs, develops, manufactures smart EVs. This is a sector that I think has been doing really well. 
I, I got a feeling it's going to stall for a little while coming up over the next couple of weeks, and then it starts up again. The reason why I'm saying it is that some of these moves, like Aruvian, etc., have had very strong uh, moves, but you know that they aren't going to make that kind of money just yet for the move in proportion to the PE, etc., that's being set up, if you can even think of PE in, in stocks like that. So this has gone to a leg um, F at 21.9%. 21.83 yesterday today today's high is 20.79 it's pulling back a little bit from the high it's up uh, 75 cents at 20.23 uh, i know that you had mentioned it the other day and i think you had calls or something gt yes it's acting extremely well this is where i'd say take a little bit off um, if you're along the stock or if you i know most of you do the options but i would be looking at not getting out at all, but I would definitely take money management profit from here. And one of the reasons is look at the on balance volume, the way it spiraled to the upside. Look at the um, when the MACD has that nine period differential, the green line spike very quickly to the upside. It almost portends the same as an on balance. It's so one of the few times I look at, I only look at on balance volume as key to overbought and oversold levels. You'll say in all the textbooks, they talk about the stochastic over 80% gets over overbought, under 20% gets oversold. They say that's the exact opposite of the, 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 the verbiage. What you want is to, for it to hold over 80%. The longer it holds, look at this. Look at this weekly chart of XPNG. From the moment you got this divergence with the MACD holding so well, Look how nicely it went. It follows the price. But the stochastic gave you that bumpy ride. The moment it went up into the 80% area, look at this. Now it's sustaining the rally. Over 80, especially over 85%. It's at 86 in the weekly right now. is excellent. And that's what I've been saying about the Dow. That I'm going against my own. Ugh. I hate when I do that. So the emotional side gets the better of me. Look, I said a flat stochastic is what you want. And even now, it's holding well with the market trying to pull back. So I don't want to, I don't want to to do anything other than to say, based on the technicals that I'm looking and observing, the XPEV has seen the, the stochastic lower. Now it's at 69 percent. The MACD had that sudden spiral to the upside. The nine-period moving average is, by any measure, the nine-period moving average is still strong. The price is way above the nine. So that's why I'm saying. I would only use money management here. I wouldn't say, oh, this is a great time to short. Let's just look at Tesla because I think not in the company, but in the price, Tesla is, has a whole, it has baggage as well as very big positives going for it. So I've, I've said that I believe that this big spike to the upside here with that gap uh, barely being filled and then going all the way to a new high of 300 did it miss 300? Yes, it did. Two nine, oh, that's right, 299.29. <laughs> Why did they miss 100? Come on, give me a break, 299.29. Um, and then it gapped down and is having a tough time. And you can see for two days now, it's gone pink. For the first time since it crossed positive back in June at about 163, it goes all the way to 299 turns around and right here in the 269 to 263 area, it's gone pink. And that says Tesla's about to pull back. Look at Rivian. Uh, I got asked about Rivian late yesterday. So Rivian, oh, R -V, R -V -I -N. oh, wait a minute. Why am I suddenly, oh, I do this all the time. Rivian, oh, R-I-V-N. Long day. Leg D. And now it's starting to get a little toppy. It looks fabulous. It's a, it's a, I wanted it for subscribers. I just didn't have the courage just to say, hey, let's get it, even with that gap. But I now think that at some point in the next three weeks, this gap will be filled in the 200 period moving average of 22 to 27. Could become really good support. But I, I think it's becoming a little vulnerable on the daily. The weekly is still very strong. So I'm just saying in the EV sector, we might be looking at just somewhat of an overbought um, ride, and they need to plug in to recharge. Uh, let's see. I mean, for the next ride, departure soon, 11 a.m., the peaks will be visible on the horizon. Weather permitting, Tesla was a full house, Basil. 
29.29, uh, great poker hand for Musk. Yeah, I must say, Musk is, he still plays his game just fantastically, I must say. But what he's done with Twitter, I... I get so upset. Of course, I have absolutely not, I'm not, not even an eye blink because I don't even have Twitter or, or uh, many of these others. I don't even do Facebook. But I don't know, when they change the name, it never works out. Mondelez, oh, who, who did it to this day? I just, what is that, Mondelez? <laughs> uh, anyway, so X, give me a break, X. Who's going to use the word X? One, one letter? To describe everything, well, maybe in three years' time they'll be saying X this and X that. But X just there's a whole other connotation. You you don't want to usurp an alphabet letter um, unless it's A for Agilent Technologies uh, or B for Bonds. Those are good companies. Or C for uh, uh, City Group, which is coming back. Uh, but you don't want or X for U.S. Steel. X U.S. Steel. Very nice rally. Peak A, peak B. Uh, alternate count right now, leg C. Yeah, the steels have been doing well. Look at NUE. I spoke about this the other day. Nice rally to recovery high, almost all time high, 187.90. It got to one, almost 174, 13 points away, less than 10% from an all time high. So, yeah, things are really working. So, I'm just, I don't want to get in the way. I'm just saying we could have a rotational correction. So, I'm going to go to the question that I had. Could you look at your uh, look at the financials? <clears throat> XLV, the S and B Select Financial Spider Fund, um, made a, a, a recovery high four days ago at thirty-five twenty uh, thirty-five seventy Pulls back the next day goes it goes just under thirty-five sixty-nine and today's high is thirty-five sixty-seven. So I like to always grab this by the, by the top and bottom and just put in a rectangle right there and say, okay, it's in a little trading band right now. Uh, the, the technicals are all strong. Stochastic's flat at 91%. I can see one more pop and then a pull back to the 3450, uh, 3490 to 3450 area for a test of strength. But this is great action. KRE was the next one that I was going to look at. Doji candle so far today stalled just under the 200 period moving average. I discussed this. It hasn't been to the 200 period moving average, daily 200, uh, forever, right? Just forever and ever. Uh, and here it is. Uh, the high today, 49.56, trading to 49.35. Um, oh, oh, I didn't read the rest of it. Uh, so what about the Capway volume climax reversal? I think it's low. 34.52. Ah, I'm getting a second. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Oh, so KRE is the S&P Regional Banking ETF. And what I had on the uh, 4th of May was a 34.52. Uh, there was this huge gap down, big red candles for three sessions, and then an even worse gap down where everyone said, I'm done with these. I am out of regionals. And we've got a Chapman Wave price volume climax. That's almost like the uh, SCHW one. Uh, that was slightly different. That was the one uh, in May, May the uh, 13th, uh, March the 13th at 45 round number low. But that one did a retest at 45.65, and then it went on and straight right now at 57, uh, 57.36. So let's go back to KRE volume. Here, look at this. When I say huge volume, it's got to be so big that it just it. it it's beyond anything. I don't want to give percentage or anything because I, you got to put it in relationship to the price movement previous to that. And this one was a monster move, almost 40% more or even higher than the previous big uh, volume move. So I see this is one that should, and we did, we bought it for a little, we bought it and I made it stop but just a little too tight. And uh, in the 37 and the 40, uh, 40 or 41 area, and then it it re retraced, and then it started its big move up, went to a peak demon. The Chapman Wave always looking for the fourth highest peak. Pulls back, makes another A B C D, and now it's in a leg E with a Doji candle just under the 200 period moving 49.99. Uh, 200 period moving average. That's the uh, resistance now. It hasn't been there. I don't want to squeeze because I think I did it the other day. It goes back about a year. So what's really important is that I I see higher highs, higher lows. The nine, the price is way over the nine. The nine is way over the 14. Magni is strong. Stochastic is good at nine, very good at 91 percent. On balance, volume is being weak, and that's one of the reasons why I didn't dive in at any point because I said I'm not seeing volume move with the stock. I like to see them in sync. Uh, that's not to say it's not going to work, but in this particular case, I, the 9 was the, really the clue. As long as the 9 is expanding above the 14, that's really good. So it's acting very well. That means that the weekly chart, let's just go to the weekly chart, leg B um, is telling you that based on all the things, it hasn't, the 9 has not yet turned over the, to the 14 to turn green. It will very soon. So that just tells you is that 49, the whole 44, 45 to 44 area should be extremely strong support. I like what's going on here. And that's the reason why I'm saying I suspect we're starting to get individual stocks. Look, if it wasn't for Boeing, another big move up today, up five, it's 238, uh, going from this flat cup formation with a handle and then a breakout today, if it wasn't for that, and Triple M in the Dow uh, having a fantastic move over the last couple of days, I think the Dow would have been stalling and I probably would have been in the right position. And I, and then from maybe Monday or Tuesday, we'd start to see the prices going towards the nine period moving average and then having another big spike to the upside with maybe one or two of the other stocks 
moving up, especially when Microsoft was such a drag. So it was actually a very good action on price, considering Microsoft yesterday. But it was also, uh, this is what I'm talking about, that if you have the, the, the instrument, the ETF itself, and not the components, sometimes it's a little bit safer, and you can have tighter stops if you're wrong. Whereas if you have an individual stock, uh, and it just goes against you. You're just kind of stuck. But there are times when you want the, um, the, the, for instance, we got a new position today, a long position today, stock that I followed for ages, and the whole group, not, they're in a medical group, but they're in different areas of the medical group. But this particular one has acted very well. I'd spoken about it earlier on, about a month or so ago, and waited, waited. I like the action yesterday, even though it's going to a leg D. It should pull back. So we've got split positions on this because I think it's in an area that could be a little bit independent of the market at this particular point. And that's the way I'm looking at it right now. Um, the other thing that I'm looking at is um, so you've got all the the deadbeats, the ones that just didn't do anything. Triple M. I mean, this is really nice to see that it's finally broken above. Uh, the, it was this rectangle right here that it just it rectangle and cup formation. It, it just was stuck. And now it's, it put its head above the resistance at 112.35. Uh, yesterday went to the 113s. It's just a good sign. And it says, hey, now I could start to have a rally. I have done some things correctly. I did things terribly. There were a lot of lawsuits and all that. I've kind of settled that. So I'm looking at this and saying there are individual stocks that can do the job so that you can look at what's under the radar. So a question came in about Airbnb. So this is under the radar in the sense that, uh, yes, perhaps it's an economic factor that we're looking at here, but I think Airbnb has kind of, they, they did things a lot wrong for, for a long time. But my suspicion is, in the main, they've kind of got it right at this particular point. And therefore, this is an alternate count, G slash C in the daily. Everything looks like it should just be called a C. I'll put G slash C only because it continued the count with the nine-period moving average not even going close to negative and the MACD not going close to negative. So it's still looking very good. And the question came in, what is my longer-term outlook? My longer-term outlook is that the 179 to 183 area is kind of a target in the intermediate term in other words i'm talking when i say intermediate term i'm really talking three probably four weeks to eight or nine weeks and that just says to me within the context of um, airbnb abnb trading up 283 uh, 153 right now um it's acting very well and to get the nine period moving average to actually daily to cross negative, you'd have to see a price moving to below 140. That's 13 points. It's almost 9% it's 9 down. They can do it, but you're going to have to have bad news in the market. And I think we just got an overbought situation, mostly in the market, that there should be some kind of a digestive phase. So, yeah, I like it very much. Um, so the question is, I am long. Where do we think it's going? And my answer is, Airbnb should make all-time highs above 220. I'm not giving that a time limit, although I'd say from the movement that I've seen, I would say by February to March of next year, if it has finally taken out 180, then that is absolutely game. But that's the way I'd look at it. And absolutely, a close below 130 at any point in the next two months says, oh, oh stalling badly. Not if it's already gone to the high and it comes back, but I'm just saying as it stands right now. Next question came in. I hope that helps you. Um, looking at questions, and so I did that. Uh, did I just do, after all that talk, did I do? Yes, I did that. That was um, XPEV. That was the EV. Okay, XPEV. I don't know if I finished it because I went off on a tangent. <laughs> no, I did. I finished it off by saying, I did take a little bit off here, looking out. This is in play, but it has huge moves to the upside. And then it takes a while as it comes down to rebuild uh, strength because, as you know, charging takes a long time. All right, so when we're looking at I'm right back to the final section, and I did get that 10 minutes back. 
see. Uh, yes. Feedback. Now it's trying to wrap. We'll be back in a bit. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. DFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So, uh, yes, can the Dow make a, a new uh, a, a, a 14th day with a, an up close? I think they're going to try their best to do that. It's the other areas I'm looking at, but look at the SMHs. So the dollar's actually now made even a high. It's up 68 ticks at 101.71. I think there's going to be pressure. I think that's coming. But I think that it's going to be a, a, a rotational rollover. Look at the SMHs. Gaps up, um, doing very well. As, as long as the SMHs are holding very nicely, I don't think that the whole market's going to tank uh, until the SMHs are actually trading under 144. They're at 159 right now. So that's going to be a clue for me looking out. That is, I'm looking about a daily trade. Okay, so a couple of things that I want to look at here is crude oil did make that leg D. We were talking about that yesterday. There it is, leg D. The nine over the price is over the nine, nine over the 14, way above the, not way, but above the 200 period moving average support of 76.89. And MACD's good, stochastic's fabulous at 94%. So crude oil is moving towards that 84 area. I said could be a target get to the upside. Uh, we'll see if that occurs. If that occurs, then we want to see what the, the uh, yields are doing. 
Uh, yields are going high because the TLT is br breaking down as we speak. It's got that dreaded H pattern, but the 9885 level is absolutely key, as I was talking to earlier yesterday about that's what if that breaks, you're looking at the TBT probably having a sudden spike to the upside over into the 32 level, and that is going to be very important. We'll be watching that. So I think the market is getting a little toppy. That's not to say it's topping out, but I'm just saying I think it's, it's going to start struggling here. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you. So check out my performance data and uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Have a wonderful day.